this week uh, marked a decisive shift in Ireland's social and economic journal, journey. As it's now uh, abundantly clear, our economic recovery is underway. Uh, slow, but it is underway. The economy is growing, unemployment is falling, and confidence is uh, slowly but surely returning. But economic recovery means nothing if the benefits are not felt by every individual family and community. We need a, a social recovery as well as an economic recovery. A social recovery that shares renewed prosperity among every, uh, to every individual family and community. And that's why I'm saying that this week is marking a decisive shift. Because in Budget 2015, we took uh, the first step in Ireland's social recovery as well as its economic recovery. And I want to talk about our vision for a social recovery and a shared prosperity, not just in Ireland, but in Europe at large. The, the economic crisis of recent years has damaged the EU and seen confidence in the institutions fall. In the process, we, we run the risk of losing sight of a fundamental truth, namely that the European community was founded to prevent future wars, to bring peace and prosperity uh, to the continent. The Schuman Declaration, which led to the establishment of the community, stated, Europe will not be made all at once or according to a single plan, but only built through concrete achievements which first create a de facto solidarity. It was that sense of solidarity that helped Ireland uh, transform economically, politically and socially. Because solidarity didn't stop at sharing values, it also meant sharing benefits. And as we emerge now from the crisis and build the economic recovery, solidarity is going to be absolutely essential once more because solidarity will ensure that renewed prosperity is shared by all and solidarity will be at the heart of social recovery. The first step towards social recovery, in my view, is work. In Ireland, we are making firm progress in increasing employment and reducing unemployment. More than 70,000 additional people are at work since 2012. Unemployment has fallen from its crisis peak then of 15.1% to 11.1% now, and it is continuing to fall. But, so while we are unquestionably going in the right direction, unemployment remains too high in Europe and across uh, the EU. It is very difficult uh, to uh, see uh, the founding fathers of the European Union actually accepting some of the levels of unemployment which are being experienced uh, by a number of societies in Europe. And even in the very strong, uh, large economies, we have levels of unemployment, particularly among young people, uh, which have to be worrying in terms of anybody uh, who shares European ideas on solidarity. So, while, so we have to increase the pace of progress both here and in Europe. And a job is the single best protection against poverty. A job is the single best way to build a better financial future for a person or their family. And that's why uh, the budget this week was pretty much almost entirely um, about work, how to develop it, how to grow it, uh, and how to have uh, people who've been locked out of work through unemployment become participants again in a very active and positive way in the world of work. We did a number of critical things. We ensured investment in the economy. We announced new incentives to help people back to work, uh, a lot of them influenced by the learning that we have had from successful European economies where the level of unemployment is very low. And small countries like Austria have achieved this. Uh, other countries like Germany have models which mean that it's possible uh, to actually have very active pro-employment policies uh, while uh, carefully uh, managing uh, public finances. Uh, for low and middle income earners in work, we've provided uh, some tax reductions so that they get to keep more of their take-home pay. 
Starting with investment, the budget provides an additional three billion in resources for the domestic economy compared to previous plans. This will help to sustain the already strengthening recovery in the domestic economy, which will support an additional 50,000 jobs next year, with, I hope, unemployment set to fall under 10% by the end of 2015. That's, that would be below what is now the European average, but I think we have to keep saying, you know, recalling that to have a European average that's above 11% in a certain sense is just truly shocking. Uh, and it is something in terms of all who care about the future of the institution that we focus on that and bringing that figure down relentlessly. Unemployed people need to be ready to take up these jobs and the government uh, recently launched uh, Pathways to Work 2015 to map the way forward in providing people with the necessary skills uh, and experiences to get back to work. To support the implementation of Pathways, 1.6 billion will be available in 2015 to provide approximately 300,000 work and training places. We are also doubling the number of Jobs Plus pos uh, positions to 6,000 with a focus on young unemployed people at a cost of 13.5 million in a full year. Jobs Plus pays a monthly cash grant uh, to employers to help with wage costs when they recruit long-term unemployed workers uh, from, uh, from the unemployment register. It's been a tremendous success to date and I'm very pleased that we are expanding the scheme next year. In addition, I'm announcing a new incentive to help job seekers with families to return to work, the Back to Work Family Dividend. Through this scheme, long-term unemployed job seekers with children who leave welfare to return to work can retain the child-related portion of their social welfare payment on a tapered basis over two years. That's worth roughly 30 euros a week per child. The scheme will be worth €1,550 per child for the first year of employment or self-employment. We're including people who start their own businesses as contractors, subcontractors or whatever. And half, they'll get half that amount uh, in the second year, i.e. €15 a week, to just ease that transition of leaving, if you like, the certainty at a low <coughs> level of welfare payments for uh, the uncertainty of the world of work, where hopefully once you become embedded in working again, inevitably after a period, uh, your, your, your uh, pay and your wages and your work opportunities uh, increase. So the dividend will help increase the pace of the progress we are making in helping people back to work. It will help to boost the recovery, reduce welfare expenditure in the long run, and most importantly, help the families in question to build a better financial future for themselves. In the corporation tax system, a suite of measures including revisions to the tax residency rules and adjustments to the R&D tax credit will maintain the competitive nature of the Irish corporate tax structure while ensuring a fair contribution uh, from the corporate sector. Finally, a number of small measures we targeted uh, at startups and SMEs, which form the backbone of employment creation in the Irish economy. These measures highlight our unrelenting focus on helping people back into work. But we're not just focusing on helping people return to work. We are reducing tax for low- and middle-income earners to ensure that those at work take home more and begin to benefit from the recovery. We're starting small, uh, but this is just the start of what I hope will be a prolonged um, tax reform process in Ireland. Um, a modest and carefully targeted package of income tax reductions of approximately 500 million will, dis will boost the disposable incomes of low and middle income families. All the available levers including rates, bans and thresholds in relation to taxation, have been employed to deliver a progressive income tax reform which targets low and middle income earners and ensures that proportionately uh, they gain the most. The changes in the universal social charge, the USC, including an, an, uh, an increase in the entry point from 10,000 to 12,000, a broadening of the lower rate band and, uh, and uh, cuts to the two lowest rates by 0.5% each 
will be of particular benefit to low-earning workers. In the income tax code, the standard rate band has been increased by 1,000 for a single person, and the top marginal rate has been reduced by 1%. Taken together with the adjustment to the top USC rate, uh, which is increased for, for high earners, uh, these changes cap benefits for incomes over 70,000. Uh, so in other words, everybody gains, but the largest proportion of the gains is in the uh, 30 to 70,000 uh, area, whether individual um, or uh, you know, couples uh, with families. So it's an extremely progressive package that focuses the relief on those uh, who most need it, low and middle income uh, workers. I want to also touch briefly on the budget uh, for social protection in 2015, which is an example of our wider approach and represents really a modest reflation in terms of the domestic economy and domestic confidence, uh, which is as critical for individuals as it is obviously for businesses. Um, so overall expenditure will fall uh, in social protection. I think that's important to say. Uh, helping to ensure the public finances remain strong. I've focused as Minister on getting people back to work that has lowered the social welfare bill uh, and in turn that has provided for a very large pay into the rest of the economy uh, or into the rest of government expenditure, particularly in the health area, going on for three years now and uh, at the same time uh, providing a continuation of core social welfare rates and in this particular year a 200 million euro social welfare improvement package targeted um, at uh, people who uh, need support. So uh, that 200 million uh, is targeted at increases in certain payments and new incentives such as the back to work family uh, dividend that I spoke about and also another uh, very important uh, payment, the family income supplement which is paid to people in work who have children and where we're expanding, we've reformed it, the IT dealing with it and uh, we're increasing the spend on that. So the targeted uh, increases uh, also include not just the family work dividend, uh, but a monthly increase in child benefit uh, for each child. This recognises the sacrifices that families made during the economic crisis and the fact that families are continuing to face difficulties. In the Statement of Priorities earlier this year, the government promised a new deal on living standards for hard-pressed families, and this increase is in line with that commitment. Uh, it is in line with the concept of solidarity that I mentioned earlier, and it's in line with the concept of sharing prosperity and uh, with sharing, uh, having a shared social recovery. In building the social recovery, the government will demonstrate something else, namely uh, that a government can both get the job done and uh, can care. So we can both be prudent and provide uh, for our people in a sustainable way. And those, that, that those two things are critical. Too often in Irish politics, we find ourselves trapped by the past, by the poor decisions and the grim consequences of yesterday. Reckless, heartless, thoughtless economic policies, to be honest, brought Ireland uh, and contributed to Ireland coming to a place grimmer and darker that many of us, if we were having this conversation 10 years ago, would have thought possible. Our people have suffered and our communities have suffered. And too often the ensnaring consequences of yesterday's failures prevented the state from doing all that it could to ameliorate uh, those difficulties. The long, dark shadow of the financial crisis still hangs over towns and farms and estates throughout the country. And yet slowly, I think the light is beginning to break through. And this budget is part of that. It's evidence of an Irish government beginning to shape a vision, not about our past, but about our future. And, you know, we are moving away from that historic period uh, of the bank guarantee and we're moving now to how we create our future. It's evidence that Ireland, battered as it was by misfortune and mismanagement, 
I think, is rising again and growing again, charting a course towards a stronger, more sustainable and more compassionate future, the kind of future our people deserve. On Tuesday, we took the first tentative steps towards constructing a new and a better society. What I believe, and what uh, my party, the Labour Party, believes, is that what we build now as we emerge from the depths of recession and austerity must be more, worth more than what came, be, came before. The Irish people have too often seen their state and their governments as the deliverer of harsh med medicine in bad times, uh, or the reckless partner of unscrupulous uh, interests in good times. We have a chance with this budget and the budgets to come to break away from that legacy and do better for all of us. Indeed, those who seek to govern Ireland have to do better, as the increasing fragmentation of our politics tells us. We have to do better, and not only that, but ensure that we're compassionate and competent uh, in equal measure. The Irish people should never be asked to choose between a government uh, that cares and a government that gets the job done. It is, after all, one of the fundamental ideas of my party that the two goals need not be in competition. With this budget, we've renewed the central duty of elected governments to tackle the problems none of us, can, uh, none of us alone can hope to face. We will put roofs over people's heads and some money back in their pockets. We will improve our systems of public utilities and we will do so while protecting people who can least afford to contribute. We will spend, but I very much hope we will do so wisely. We will save, but we will do so in a humane way. We will get people back to work and we will do uh, and uh, we will cut no corners and leave no reservoir of potential untapped. I want to see all uh, citizens in Ireland, families and people in Ireland, participants. They may not be able to get a job today. Uh, the route to getting employment and becoming a full economic participant may lie uh, through further education and training. If so, we have some really good offers in relation to that. Solidarity is really what all of this is about, and this is what the social recovery is about. I'm aware that our fortunes in Ireland are closely intertwined with the economic outlook for the wider Euro area, which does remain uh, worryingly fragile. Too often in Ireland, uh, a certain image of Europe has prevailed. The Irish people have long been at the forefront of the European project, advocates of peace and understanding and cooperation with the rest of our shared co continent. And yet, for all of that, the concept of union has, for a lot of people in this country, uh, been distant, a remote presence in Brussels, rather than a living, breathing part of our identity and our cultural life. There's always a temptation for politicians and the public to use Europe as a, you know, a shorthand for vague forces beyond our control as our economic saviour or our distant taskmaster. I think we can change that perception of the EU. Just as we move from crisis to recovery at home, so too can we work with our partners and fellow citizens of the EU to take our joint project to the next step. The greatest peace project, really, in the history of humanity has delivered on its aim, largely, to eliminate war between its constituent nation states. It has, through treaties and agreements, taken on a great role in our economic and political lives. Yet, as we knew when we put together our budget last Tuesday, an economic system without a social core really is a recipe for alienation and disharmony. The EU has to be a positive force in the lives of its citizens, not just a guiding hand uh, to economies or a means of settling disputes. The system we have built as sovereign governments must undergo, I think, a second uh, creation, this time by citizens to create a democratic and social Europe, 
of which we each feel ownership and a sense of belonging, that Europe is the home place as much as Ireland is the home country, or France is the home country, or Italy, or any other country uh, in Europe is the home country. But Europe is also our home, and we should be able to, to, to have those dual allegiances, if you like, in terms of what we're building. The founding uh, principles of the Labour Party have always committed to international uh, cooperation and this country's long-standing belief in human rights and foreign aid, peacekeeping and free movement has ensured we think almost as much beyond our shores as within the boundaries of our island, not least because so many of our people have left uh, going on now for several centuries to seek you know, a living and to seek their fortune in other countries. Europe can be a place where people and nations both come together and work together towards shaping a better continent and a better world for all of us. It can be a shining light for democracy and compassion, for our common values of unity through diversity. It can be a continent that cares not just about numbers and borders and the finer part, parts of legislation, but for the social development and well-being of all of its people, whether they're French or German, Irish or Finn, Polish or Dutch or Romanian. Ireland has always been, I think, a very good performer in Europe. Now as we return as an equal partner in the Union, I think we need to seek to be standout performers again and to be at the forefront of, of crafting the next major development in this historic project. That's creating a truly social Europe. And again, I think the first building block of that is getting people back to work uh, and uh, getting unemployment down. It is crucial that the work of the new EU institutions remain firmly focused on mobilising a stronger response to unacceptably high levels of unemployment. This emphasis is at the heart of both the strategic agenda agreed by the Euro June European Council and the political guidelines presented by the incoming Commissioner, Commission President, uh, President Juncker in July. It's clear that across Europe, member states need to adapt their employment policies and education and training systems to be more responsive to economic reality. This needs to be a critical focus of the European semester process. Uh, I want to say in conclusion that the first stage of Ireland's recovery uh, is, is, is complete. So, you know, we're at the, if you like the end of the beginning, and now we have to move forward. Um, the aim now is to sustain this recovery and to begin the next stage of restoring living standards for individuals, for families, for older people, for low- and middle-income <coughs> workers, building the social recovery, in other words, by renewing prosperity and ensuring that it's felt by all. And a social recovery, as I said, uh, that in the wider EU context, I believe, is as essential for the EU as it is for Ireland. Uh, today, um, you know, also marks the day on which both uh, the Minister for Foreign Affairs, uh, Charlie Flan Flanagan, uh, is in Belfast uh, to take part in the renewed process uh, in relation to Northern Ireland, uh, accompanied by a Labour Party Minister of State, uh, Sean, Sean Sherlock. So both parties in government are committed uh, to uh, the process of building and sustaining the peace in Northern Ireland. I'm very conscious that not just the United States, but the European Union played a critical role in facilitating uh, all of the achievements uh, of the peace process. And again, 
I do hope that in the context of how the talks develop, uh, that the European Union again will be as it was at critical stages, uh, essentially uh, one of the strongest supporters, uh, political, social guarantors of the process, as well as the two governments uh, and indeed um, our friends in America. Thank you very much. Thank <clears throat> you.